And now, meet your host for today's Monster Book Tower. <laughs> Well, obviously the monster's going to be pretty tricky to understand, so I'll be translating as we go along. <laughs> Hello. Welcome to the Book Tower, which today is all about monsters. My guests today are the authors of the famous fighting fantasy adventure game books. They're Steve Jackson and Ian Livingston. Hello, etc. Now, tell me, what are adventure game books? Well, adventure game books are exactly that, really. They're a cross between a game and a book. You play them like games, and but you read them like books as well. So what you've got is elements of a simplified role-playing game and also a fantasy novel. Now, the difference is that in these books, you're the hero. You're on a quest. If you look at a, an adventure game book, like The Warlock of Firetop Mountain here, you'll find that the paragraphs in the book are all numbered. For example here, and if you read it from start to finish, it makes absolutely no sense at all. What you do is con you're continually making decisions as the hero, flicking backwards and forwards as you make choices, and each of your choices sends you to a different number as you go through the book. So you can play these game books any number of times, and each time you'll find it's a different adventure. <laughs> Very interesting. Are they difficult to write? Well, for someone like you with a brain the size of a peanut, I just suspect they're very difficult to write. But for us humans, it's somewhat simpler. Now, I'll, without giving you too much away, this is exactly how it's done. Come on, pay attention, pay attention. This is a flow chart, and this so, it keeps, so we can keep a record of what's going on on the adventure, no matter which way you choose. So if you go up this route, for example, you do all this. Hey, now keep up, cut your fingernails. And if you go this way, this would happen to you. Yeah. Now, I don't want to tell you too much about it because you probably go back to your own planet, write these books, make lots of money, but the difference with you are the monster killing the humans, and we don't want to advocate that, so uh, no more secrets for you. We're fascinated to know how do you go about inventing the monsters in the books? Well, from all the monsters that come come to you from all sorts of different sources, really. Um, from reading fantasy novels, you get ideas for creating monsters. Mm -hmm. From even from dreams, and I suppose from a misspent youth sneaking into horror films at under sixteen, reading too many comics. Right. Pardon me. And who is your favourite monster? It certainly isn't you. That's for sure. Um, uh, a much better monster than you is this one, and this is called the Blood Beast. Uh, pay attention. Look, this is a decent monster. This featured in Death Trap Dungeon, and it was devised between the artist and myself and to fit a certain situation in the book. And it's painted by, brilliantly, isn't it, don't you think? <laughs> by a man called Ian McCaig, who's a great fantasy artist, who, just so happens, has illustrated all of my new book called Casket of Souls. Now pay attention, because there's lots of good monsters in this, and if you solve this, well, you that's all well. we've got it's time for now. And my favourite monster is the Jabberwocky. So get out there and buy the book now. Twas bleeding, and the slithy toes did gyre and gimble in the wave. All mimsy were the bother groves, and the mome rats outgrained.
scared I was just looking for something <laughs> this is a book about how to draw monsters and other creatures it's called how to draw monsters and other creatures even if you've never been very good at art the book shows you simple ways to sketch creatures like this dinosaur Whistle, 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 whistle. It's great because even if you can't draw at all, it gives you easy guidelines to follow. For instance, it explains how rounded shapes are friendlier than sharp, spiky ones. I also really like these spooky pictures, which are made by shading an area with pencil or charcoal, and then using a rubber to rub out the shapes. And there's a whole page about drawing monsters based on ordinary objects. There's a monster vacuum cleaner, a monstrous cooker, and even a terrifying car. <laughs> Well, what the monster's saying at the moment isn't really translatable. So, meanwhile, here's a film about some people who really can draw monsters. <laughs> so, you want to know about monsters, eh? Ah, yes, monsters. You wanted to know about monsters, yes? Ah, well, I've met one or two monsters in my time. In fact, when I went with Eric the Viking on this, on this voyage of discovery, we, we met several monsters here. For example, we met the, the monsters who have their heads in the middle of their shoulders here, who are pretty terrifying creatures. And there was another monster we've met who looks a bit like a punk to me. I'm quite amazed the way Michael Foreman draws these things. Sometimes I write down, well, I do little scribbles in the, I always have a little book um, either in my pocket when I'm out in the daytime or near the bed so I can scribble down silly ideas. And usually in the morning, um, I wonder why I try to remember them. But uh, occasionally, they have resulted in, in a book. I just write down monster with long hair and silver skin. And then uh, gradually, I well, hope Michael's going to come up with something. And then uh, gradually, the monster does develop a little personality as it, as it writes on, as the story develops. Quite often, I have um, something in the back of my mind so that I know vaguely which direction to go in. And there's one monster in um, Eric the Viking, which I based on some of the punks which I see down uh, the King's Road. Terry's description would be um, of long silver hair, which gave me a kind of idea. But that seems a bit um, kind of hippie in a way. So I gave him a, um, a kind of punk uh, crew cut on the top of his head. And that I think that shaven heads are very um, sinister in a way, and you can have all kinds of warts and bumps on them, or you can have bits of plaster, or you can have um, the stitch marks of old wounds and scars, and so it gives the character a kind of history. You realise that he's been through all kinds of um, horrible adventures along the way. It's really based on that, um, you know, the monster in uh, Bean, Jack and the Beanstalk, you know, really, who sees those five families doing all this cooking and everything, and getting all the uh, preparations ready for a meal, and Eric and his men are obviously going to be the next meal. And, uh, and then they discover this 
harp that uh, it sings in the winds in the caves. And uh, when they discover the harp and they steal the harp, and uh, they get back to the monster, and they find actually he's not such a bad monster after all. Well, I think you just have to somehow visualize it in your own person and maybe act it out a bit. How would he move? How would he hold his shoulders? And then you begin to, to um, know that uh, if, you, if he has kind of bulging eyes or one eye higher than the other, or the, the teeth are ragged and jagged and discolored, there are all kinds of things you can keep um, emphasizing until he has got the, the right amount of horror. Could you say in subtitles, please? Ah, that's better, yes. Uh, do I have a favorite monster? Oh, yes. Well, I suppose I quite like the one that Brave Molly meets in my book of fairy tales, because it's this terrifying monster that leaps out of this... Sorry, Zan. <laughs> it's this terrifying monster that leaps out of this house. And, uh, and then in the end, it turns out to be just... Uh, Brave Molly hits it on the nose with her satchel, and... Uh, gets a pink ribbon round it, she pulls the ribbon, and inside is a little rabbit who says, uh, please don't put me in the pie. I quite like him. But monsters, as you say, they are rather sad. I don't mean this, that you're sad, Mr. Monster. I just mean monsters in, in general can be sad. Don't cry, don't cry, really. It's all right, Mr. Monster. I can't stand to think of these monsters. It's terrible. Sob, 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 sob. Sniff, sniff. Anyway, here's a list of the very tasty books that were in this monster edition of Booktown.